Kannan Gopalakrishnan. He was working as a senior architect at Engineering Design Research Center, L&T Construction, India's largest construction company. He's also worked on projects ranging from institutional buildings to international airports, apartment complexes to aircraft hangars. He's also attended three international conferences and two national conferences and has also presented technical papers at the Jawaharlal Nehru University, Delhi and the MSRIT, Bangalore. He's also won the national championship at Archimen at the India's largest architecture quiz. Sir Kannan Gopalakrishnan currently runs a design firm, Habitat Design Studio and he is also a visiting faculty at the renowned architecture schools in Tamil Nadu. Welcome back to UGC lecture series. This is AR6006 Structure and Architecture. Uh, we are still in the last leg of Unit 2, which deals with history of structural design in the post-industrial period. And this is lecture 9. And we saw in the previous lecture about the works of Felix Candela and Eero Sarinen. And in this lecture, we will be looking at the works of another famous master architect, Buckminster Fuller. Richard Buckminster Fuller, or also called as Bucky, was born in the year 1895 and lived 88 long years and died in 1983. He was an American architect and a systems theorist, an author, a designer, an inventor and whatnot. He has published more than 30 books in his career and he is famous for coining and popularizing many terms such as spaceship earth, ephemeralization, synergetic, etc. He was the person who popularized the geodesic dome. The, what we see as geodesic domes today was once popularized by Richard Buckminster Fuller. And the carbon molecules which are known as fullerenes were later named by scientists for their structural and mathematical resemblance to geodesic domes. Now, they had renamed carbon molecules as fullerenes, giving credit to Fuller because he popularized the geodesic dome and the substance had striking resemblance in terms of structural and mathematical way with the Buckminster Fuller's geodesic domes. Fuller was the second world president of Mensa from the year 1974 to 1983. He attended the Harvard University, where in his early career, he was expelled from the university twice. Let's have a look at his early life and career. Fuller was born on July 12, 1895 in Milton, Massachusetts, son of Richard Buckminster Fuller Sr. and Carolyn Walcott Andrews. Initially at school, he had trouble with geometry, being unable to understand the simple abstraction necessary to imagine that a chalk dot on the blackboard actually represents a mathematical point or that simply a straight line with a pointed arrow at the end extends till infinity. He was not able to understand basic, simple, abstract, complex things like this. But later he went on to familiarize geodesic domes as he was the pioneer of having geodesic domes. Fuller taught at Black Mountain College in North Carolina during the summers of 1948 and 1949. There, with the support of a group of professors and students, he began reinventing a project that would make him famous throughout the world, the geodesic dome. Although the geodesic dome had been invented about 30 years ago by Dr. Walter Borsfeld. Fuller was awarded the United States patent for the geodesic domes. He is credited for popularizing this type of structure. If you have been thinking what a geodesic dome looks like or how do I, how do I even know, identify a geodesic dome from a normal dome, this is how a geodesic dome looks like. You see these complex triangular shaped patterns which reoccur 
which creates the entire structure. It's a dome which is created of triangles, straight lines, hexagons. This is how a geodesic dome looks. One of his very early models was first constructed in 1945 at Bennington College in Vermont. That is a place where he frequently lectured. In 1949, he erected his first geodesic dome building that could sustain its own weight with practically no limits. It was 4.3 meters in diameter and was constructed of aluminum aircraft tubing material and a vinyl plastic skin. To prove his design's worth, Fuller suspended from the structure's framework and several students who had helped him build it. He actually hung, he suspended from the structure's framework so that he suspended himself from the structure's framework where a lot of people helped him build it. He suspended himself so that he will actually prove the structure's fitness. Look at how confident a person has to be in order to suspend himself from the structural framework. The US government immediately recognized the importance of his work and they employed him and his firm Geodesics INC in Raleigh, North Carolina to make several small domes for the Marines. Within a few years, there were thousands of these domes all around the world. Fuller's first continuous tension discontinuous compression geodesic dome it's called continuous tension and discontinuous compression domes because uh, this dome is a particular type of structure where the tensional element is always there in the structure. Wherever you see there is always only tension and compression is a very very limited areas. It occurs only at certain points and there is no continuous compression here. But the tension is continuous in this entire structure. It's, it's called continuous tension discontinuous compression structures. And we also saw a similar kind of structures earlier in our lectures, which is called the tensegrity structures. We saw there also that tensegrity structure was named tensegrity by Richard Buckminster Fuller, and he was one of the pioneers who invented this type of structure. And it, it's called continuous tension, discontinuous compression because the tension element is always there, and the compression element is very very minimal, and it is reduced to only certain points. Buckminster Fuller. He repeatedly worked with tension elements such in, in such a way that he whatever that he worked on he, he has a very very strong connotation with tension. These continuous tension discontinuous compression structures featured in single force compression members uh, which has no flexure or bending whatsoever that did not touch each other and were suspended by tensional members. A geodesic dome this is how a geodesic dome looks. Fuller was most famous for his lattice shell structures. Geodesic domes have been used as part of military radar stations, civic buildings, environmental protest camps, and exhibition attractions. Their construction is based on extending some basic principles to build simple tensegrity structures like tetrahedron, octahedron, and the closest packing of spears, making them extremely lightweight and enormously stable. The Fuller Dome is referenced in the Hugo Award winning novel called uh, Stand on Zanzibar by John Brunner, in which uh, there is this geodesic dome which is said to have covered an entire island of Manhattan. It actually floats in the air uh, due to the very very light weight and it covers the entire city of Manhattan and this hot this this entire thing is floating because of the hot air inside the thing it creates a hot air balloon effect on the large air mass which is under which is immediately under the dome so uh, this kind of a feature is there in in this novel and and that novel was awarded the hugo award for uh, the best novel uh, the novel is called stand on zanzibar it's written by john brunner we need to understand another important building uh, of Buckminster Fuller which is called the Montreal Biosphere. This is how the building looks. L this is the building and this is placed outside the building. This The building is kept inside this huge lattice framework geodesic dome. This is the building 
and look at how big this building, this geodesic dome is. Fuller was lecturing at NC State University, North Carolina State University in Raleigh in 1949, where he met James Fritzgibbon, who would later become a very close friend and a colleague. He began working with architect Shoji Sadao in 1954, and in 1964, they co-founded architectural firm Fuller and Sadao Inc., whose first project was to design the large geodesic dome for the U.S. pavilion at Expo 67 in Montreal. This building is now the Montreal Biosphere. A list of awards and recognitions which Fuller had received. Fuller was awarded 28 United States patents and many honorary doctorates. In 1960, he was awarded the Frank P. Brown Medal from the Franklin Institute. Fuller was elected as an honorary member of Phi Beta Kappa in 1967 on the occasion of the 50th year reunion of his Harvard class of 1917. In 1968, he was elected into the National Academy of Design as an associate member and became a full academician in 1970. Fuller did not just work in the principle of structure, he was an inventor. By that extension, he worked on a variety of areas, including transportation. He was the designer of the Dimaction car. The Dimaction car was a vehicle designed by Fuller, featured prominently at Chicago's 1933-34 Century of Progress World's Fair. During the Great Depression, Fuller formed the Dimaction Corporation and built three prototypes with noted naval architect Starling Burgess and a team of 27 workmen. With this team of a naval architect and some workmen, he designed three prototypes of the Dimaction car. The Dimaction car was actually not an automobile per se, but rather the ground taxiing mode of a vehicle uh, that might one day be designed to fly, designed to land and drive. Uh, he called him, he called the car as an omni medium transport, uh, which he claimed that he will uh, be able to travel via air, land and water in the same automobile. Fuller focused on the landing and taxiing qualities of the automobile and noted severe limitation in its handling. The team made constant improvements and refinements to the platform. There was an account where once Buckminster Fuller was actually accused of creating the dimension car with imperfections because this car went and there was one accident in the street where there was another car which was driven by a local politician and Absir after a lot of cases and after a lot of investigation, it was proven that the Dimaction car was not at fault. Uh, but still, there was an accusation. And later on, when Buckminster Fuller was driving the Dimaction car along with his daughter, he also crashed once in this car. But that doesn't mean the car is impractical or uh, the car is not of a right design or something. But the idea of a Dimaction car, which a uh, nominee medium transport, which can fly, uh, wade through water and still uh, go on land at the same time, is an amazing, brilliant idea. We need to look at the word Dimaction itself because Buckminster Fuller constantly associated the word Dimaction with most of his work. This word is a portmanteau of the words a dynamic, maximum, and tension to sum up the goal of a study. Maximum gain of advantage from minimal energy input. He took the dy from dynamic, max from maximum, and ion from tension. So thereby giving this word dimaxian. And this word has been associated with a lot of projects, a lot of ideas that that Richard Buckminster Fuller brought into this world. And 
maximum gain of advantage from minimal input of energy was his entire concept of his product, entire concept of his life's work itself. Not only did he work on transportation, he also worked on housing. He calls it the Dimaction House. Fuller's energy efficient and inexpensive Dimaction House garnered much interest but only two prototypes were ever produced. This prototype is a round structure, not a dome. This is shaped like a flattened bell of a certain jellyfish. It has several innovative features including revolving dresser drawers and a fine mist shower that reduces water consumption drastically. According to Fuller's biographer Steve Crooks, the house was designed to be delivered in two cylindrical packages with interior color panels available at local dealers. A structural uh, central circular structure at the top of the house was designed to rotate around a central mast to use natural wind for cooling and air circuit. If you're wondering how the building looks like, this is how the building looks like. The Dimaction house with its central dome which can revolve with windows all around. This is how the building looks like and such a pity that only two prototypes were ever made of the structure. Another picture of the other Dimaction house which was made. Look at the way he uses a cowl which allows for escape of air from the top and the way he uses visual element or way he integrates the inside of the building with the outside. Let's look at another interesting thing which Richard Buckminster Fuller worked on. It's called uh, the Dimaction map. Fuller designed an alternative projection map called the Dimaction map. This was designed to show Earth's continents with minimum distortion when projected or printed on a flat surface. There was a constant need to print the world map on a piece of paper. With the current projection where we use a rectangular piece of paper to print all the world's continents, there is always great amounts of distortion which is created in the continents. To minimize the distortion, Buckminster Fuller imagined that the world is a geodesic dome and he divided the sphere into a, variety, a large number of triangles and he juxtaposed the triangles of the geodesic dome with the globe and he transferred all the mapping things from the globe to his triangle system. The map looks something like this. The relative position of the continents, the North America with respect to South America, with reference to Antarctica here, and the way the distance between North America and Greenland, the distance between North America and Russia over here, and all the way till uh, China and India, and with, with Europe, Gulf, and Africa here, and the Asia extending into Australia in the far end here. The actual reference of one continent with reference to another continent or with respect to another advance is all perfectly right. Where? Because these this longitude actually gets connected and all these things are of belonging to the same longitude. Which means all these things are all, all along the same piece of paper. Which means when you are taking a print of this thing, the distortion level that is produced is very very minimal and here if you roll out if you if you take a print of this and if you fold along these triangular edges you will still be able to create a complete sphere out of these triangles forming a geodesic dome in itself recently there was a competition which was announced worldwide to create newer versions of time action map itself so people came up with a lot of options and this Dimaction map which is made of wood won the competition. It is the same map which Richard Buckminster Fuller designed. The same map, it uses the same concept, it uses the same idea, it uses the same idea of splitting into triangles but just that it is made of 
wood rather than made of paper. In the 1960s, Fuller developed a game called the World Game. It is a collaborative simulation game played on a 70 by 35 foot large Dimaxion map in which players attempt to solve world problems. Apparently, there is a very, very big map which is 70 feet by 35 feet long. And on this map, there are people who play the game. They attempt to save the world by solving the problems of the world. Each and each place has some problems and these people have to solve the problems. The ultimate goal of Richard Buckminster Fuller was to create a world with absolutely no problems. He, he always belonged uh, to the entire world. He always calls the universe as his home and he always has very, very high ideas of creating world peace with the structure and with with the mind with the power of the mind and this is one game which he developed wherein he attempted to solve solve the world problems by developing a game another interesting concept which we need to understand while we are studying Richard Buckminster Fuller is the fly eyes dome this is how the dome looks like it's called a fly eyes dome because of enormously large bulging eyes that looks very very similar to that of a, a house fly's eyes. Uh, Fuller designed the dome as his idea of the uh, affordable portable home of the future. If you uh, see if you say affordable it is made of one uh, simple piece of elements because this is the only piece which you need to buy and this piece it when it when it can be multiplied, this is the same piece as this. This is the same piece as this. When this piece can be multiplied into any number of components, the whole dome is produced. So it is made up of one single component, which is this unit, it creates the entire thing. Similarly, this is the unit and this single unit produces the entire dome. Here in this picture, you can see the dimension car also this is how the dimension car looks like you didn't see the pictures in the earlier slides but this is how the dimension car looks like and and you see the fly eyes dome in the background look at the comparison of sizes between his automobile and uh, the door look at how big his dreams are he calls it the affordable portable home of the future with windows and openings in the dome to hold solar panels and systems for water collection, thus allowing the dome to be self-sufficient. He imagines that these holes will hold solar panels and systems for water collection, water transportation, water movement, so thereby making the whole dome a self-sufficient structure in itself. There are only three prototypes which were built of the fly eyes dome one was 24 feet diameter one was 12 foot diameter and a third one was much much bigger than that the bigger dome is owned by uh, an art gallery and the mid-sized dome 24 feet dome is owned by a miami based real estate developer and the smallest of the fly eyes dome is owned by none other than norman foster of foster and partners Buckminster Fuller was quirky in nature. Following his global prominence from 1960s onward, Fuller became a frequent flyer, often crossing time zones to lecture in international cities. In the 60s and 70s, he wore three watches simultaneously, one for the time zone of his office in Carbondale, one for the time zone of the location he would visit next, and one for the time zone of the country he was currently in. With this, we come to an end of this lecture. By understanding this, by watching this lecture, you should have understood the complex structural marvels designed by Richard Buckminster Fuller. You should have had understanding of the Dimaxion car, the Dimaxion house, the Dimaxion map, etc. We should be also be able to understand the geodesic dome and its relevance. With the learnings that we have had from this episode, we should be able to answer some questions that are appearing on your screen right now. What is a geodesic dome? 
explain with sketches. What is dimaxion? Why did Buckminster Fuller insist on using this word and have it associated with most of his projects? Explain a few works by Buckminster Fuller with sketches and relevant examples. With this, we come to an end of this episode and we also come to an end of Unit 2 and hope to see you all with Unit 3's content on the other side of the episode. Thank you.